in this video, I'm going to aim to cover a subject as quickly as possible that I feel should have been covered a long time ago by numerous outlets. And that's really just breaking down in as simplest terms as possible why there are so many supply issues almost one year after the new PlayStation and Xboxes have released and why they continue to happen and what can be done to alleviate them. Now, this comes hot off the heels of that PlayStation 5 Pro and Xbox Series refresh leak I did where I confirmed, and I'm really not kidding, guys, from within Sony, from within AMD, from within Microsoft, all three of these companies, they're working together on designing new consoles to come out over the next few years. And, well, the overwhelming response to that video was positive. I'm going to be clear up front in this video. I gained more subscribers than a usual video, more Patreon supporters than a usual video, and within the Moore's Laws Dead Discord and Patreon, it's been pretty typical conversation. You know, some info comes out, and then there's a discussion of, you know, what that really means, and, you know, should they try this type of RAM or this capacity or do that? There wasn't a whole lot of anger. And to be honest... When I look at the over 90% upvotes and the news community members that are joining rapidly, I can't help but go, yeah, that's disproportionate to the comments section. Or about a third of the comments are angry or at least annoyed. And I can't help but feel that a lot of these angry comments came from people that clicked in without watching the video. Now, you always expect some of that. There just seems to be hate brigades that go around and yell at anyone, honestly anyone, just because, I don't know, some people are in a bad mood. But there's other people that I believe saw what some websites were quoting from my video and, well, they didn't watch it. And a lot of the quoting of my video in articles has been just completely misrepresented what the video actually said. I'm just going to say it. And I'm always happy when a website covers news that I'm putting out there. It helps me. It helps me grow, gets me more reach. But it is very frustrating when what's covered isn't what was said, right? Most of the clickbaitiness came from people saying that I was confirming some $700 8K console. That's not what I confirmed. If anything, I just said that's an option, but I would argue against them doing that, that it's probably going to be cheaper, that they should focus on supply and other ways of making the die smaller and only a little stronger because clearly people don't want more performance. They just, well, they just want it to be cheaper and to be more available, which on that note availability, I actually feel the most important thing to cover in this video is the misconceptions about what's going on with supply and what it would mean for supply if a six nanometer Xbox Series S or PlayStation 5 Slim were to come out in a year or two, which I don't care if you believe me. Let's just talk about what it would mean. Let's get away from the rumors. Let's just talk about what that would mean. You see, when Xbox decided to design their APU. They went to AMD uh, very believably again because they just thought they were the best option to go with both for backwards compatibility reasons and because AMD really knows what they're doing when it comes to making gaming SOC. So let's just be honest at this point. And so they designed it with AMD just like Sony did and they both had different ways of trying to make a console that gets the performance levels they want. They're pretty similar in performance in that way but they're they're different and they said okay this is what we're going to do. And then they worked with AMD to secure wafers with TSMC really years ahead of time. Now every now and then there will be people that back out of wafer agreements and you'll see someone like Sony swoop in and buy up the wafers to make extra PS5s whenever they can. But for the most part the majority of the Xboxes, the PlayStations being produced that was set in stone years ago when they bought up capacity for that allotment. TSMC is in high demand. This is bought ahead of time. So once the shortage is started, there's only so much they can do. And they have been trying to secure as much capacity as possible, paying extra, doing whatever they can because they want to sell more consoles. But at a certain point, TSMC capacity has not been the issue. And this is where we get into... Something really important that I don't think enough people are just directly saying in videos. And that's that the wafer, which I have one right here. This is a wafer, a silicon wafer with a bunch of dies, right? These come down, then they are cut up into a bunch of maybe PlayStation 5s. This is a real one here, not PlayStation 5, of course, but a real silicon wafer. These wafers, the, sub the ability to produce them out of the assembly line, if you will, that's not the holdup anymore. It's the substrate. The substrate is really the disc before it's turned into the final silicon dies. 
that raw, more raw-ish material there is the holdup. And then the materials to make those discs, that's the holdup. And although it's not as hard, or should I say as specialized as what TSMC or Global Foundries do, not everyone can make those. I can't just bake that in my oven. And so when a massive shortage happens, like has just happened, well, they try to buy up and get start working with more and more substrate suppliers and expand their production capacity. But that takes years. You know, I worked in the automotive industry where we would just like make tubing for parts of cars. And even then, you know, from telling us what type of tubing they needed to forming the shape, to testing it, to make sure it fits properly, that would take like six months alone. That's a lot easier than making something as complex and high tech as this. So it takes a while to get more substrate. And that's what's going on right now. And that's what they're trying to do, right? And that should start to get better in 2022. Now, this gets us to the important point, though, about a Xbox Series S 6 nanometer refresh, for example. And a lot of people saying, how can they bother to do this you know, if they can't even make enough consoles now, won't this make things worse? Six nanometer is design compatible with the seven nanometer the Xbox series consoles are made on right now. And it's actually just denser. So it's not strictly correct to say that because you can fit more dyes on a wafer, it will just automatically help supply by that 10 to 20%, depending on how much they shrink the dye. That's not strictly true because there are different materials and different manufacturing methods used for that six nanometer, even if it is design compatible, but it is less raw materials and it will probably use less energy, which means smaller power supplies, which means less power components, cheaper VRMs, not cheaper because they're cheaping out, but because it, it just does not need as much. You know, that will help supply. A new Xbox Series S on six nanometer or a PlayStation 5 Slim will help supply. Less raw materials will be required. And most importantly, this new Xbox Series S refresh will be designed Understanding the modern world that it's being manufactured in, it will be manufactured with Microsoft fully knowing how scarce some of the resources are right now. And so they will design the PCB, which I am told directly is another major holdup. After Substrate, it's basically power circuitry as confirmed by Toshiba, and it is also... PCBs and other surrounding components. They can design a new Series S smarter, you know, in a way that uses less components so that there is less holdup, so that they can supply more. And Sony will do the same. Heck, Sony has already done the same despite not using a new piece of silicon for the die, but the new PlayStation 5, despite some frankly just completely incorrect reporting from some initial people, if you actually look at the people who know what they're talking about now, it actually it runs cooler, uses less energy, and is cheaper and lighter to manufacture, right? That is just smarter design. That's what new console refreshes from Microsoft and Sony will do. Using smaller nodes with, that require less raw materials, that use less energy, that require less supporting components because less energy just means really everything can be less over-engineered. An Xbox Series S refresh next year that is a bit stronger, which watch that video where I break down why it might be, that would allow Microsoft to bring you something stronger than what they have now at the same price point and in greater availability. And the same goes for if Sony moves on to a six nanometer PlayStation 5 Slim and a five or I would even wonder four nanometer PlayStation 5 Pro at the end of 2023. Instead of just having one bigger seven nanometer die that can move to six and five that require less energy, that require less raw materials, that can be better mass manufactured on multiple nodes. So... To say that Sony or Microsoft are being greedy or evil by doing these redesigns or pros is to misunderstand that when they design these refreshes, they will be from the perspective of helping supply. You should want these to come out as soon as possible if you actually want to buy these consoles. That's the truth of the matter. Although there is one thing I want to talk about that I've been informed on from a couple of Microsoft sources that I feel should be spoken on as well that just because I haven't seen anyone else say this. Now, you have to understand that well, it's really hard to get a Series X or especially a PlayStation 5 right now. The Series S is barely being scalped at this point. You can find it 
Well, at some Best Buys around, although not the one right next to me, it isn't completely sold out if you check online. It's in some stores. And if you go to eBay, it's not marked up as much as you might think it would be. And sometimes you can even find it on Amazon or Newegg at MSRP at 300 bucks. So there's a reason this is happening, though, and it isn't happening with the Series X. Now, yes, the Series X is a much bigger die than the Series S, so they can't make as many for the same amount of capacity that they have secured with TSMC. But also... XCloud is becoming very popular, and I continue to believe this point is very underreported. The Xbox Series X was designed from the ground up to work as a good cloud gaming APU, and I even am told it's being considered for other uses. So, so the Series X APU is not just for consoles. It's bigger, it has more teraflops because it has to do more things at once in a server. It was a dual design in case the console didn't sell well, but obviously it is. Better than Microsoft expected, but they're focusing more so on cloud. They see Xbox long-term as a software, as a service company. And so, well, while they're building out their xCloud blades right now for streaming, they're just being forced to decide to send most of the Series X APUs to their servers while they build those out and focus on trying to get as many Series S's to consumers as they can. Hence why it also makes sense that they're working on a Series S refresh that's more powerful than the initial Series S at the same price next year with better availability. That makes sense why they're doing that first, because they need the Series X. Well, they need it for their servers as well. That is one little piece of information that I wanted to make sure I told you guys in this video in addition to the other stuff. But I guess I'll close on this video by saying this. If you go look at reporting by Bloomberg or really any major news outlet that is talking to people within these companies, they're trying to make as many consoles as they can. The PlayStation 5 is outselling the PlayStation 4 in aligned sales. There, this idea that these companies want there to be scarcity is... It's just not true. The evidence doesn't support it. And if they do a redesign of these consoles and release them, it will only be to make more money. In other words, to supply you more consoles and being able to redesign them on smaller nodes with less raw materials, taking up less space on a wafer that use less energy, therefore requiring, you know, smaller PCBs, smaller, v less VR, you know, less expensive VRMs and other power components that are in hot demand right now. All of this will help. So you should be rooting for these to come out, even though I understand that it's very frustrating that you can't get one maybe yet, at least not easily. And, um, well, it is what it is. But they're doing everything they can, uh, for the most part, that is. Obviously, maybe they prioritize streaming or something instead. But anyways, I thought this was an important video to put out quickly before the end of the week, just because this is a major misconception that I haven't seen tackled directly in one video. I think a lot of people, including me, have danced around these subjects in various podcasts, but just one pointed video to try to make it clear what's going on. I hope this helped. And if you'd enjoyed it, please remember, subscribe to the YouTube channel, ring the bell button, support me on Patreon if you can. It helps me co-host Dan, our audio engineer. You're supporting multiple people if you support us there. And um, well, as always, please share our videos and thank you for watching. <laughs>